At MWC this year, Nokia and HMD Global unveiled a litter of new smartphones and at least one new dumb phone. Whilst the Nokia 8 Sirocco was definitely the big flagship of the set, it was actually the Nokia 7 Plus that in many ways garnered more attention. That's because it represented, at least on paper, some serious bang for your buck. Why do we get a Nokia 7 Plus and a Nokia 8 Sirocco? I don't know, because HMD is quirky, I guess. For considerably less than a flagship device at $349.99 here in the UK, the Nokia 7 Plus nevertheless manages to give you a lot of flagshipy goodness. That means things like an 18x9 aspect ratio, a dual lens camera with bokeh mode, uh, really impressive build quality. But whilst it's very good on paper, let's take a closer look and see if this is really the premium affordable device to beat. So first up, the design, which really is quite eye-catching and impressive. This device is machined from a single block of 6000 series aluminium and it's coated with multiple layers of ceramic paint. That not only gives it a nice matte feeling in the hand, but it also manages to hide any visible antenna lines. So it's a nice sleek finish all down the back. It's not too fingerprinty and it feels nice and grippy in the hand. It's a slim device, it's light, and it has this nice color accent around the edge. Uh, always bronze, but you can get the body in either black or white. On the whole, it looks and feels like a fairly premium device. It's not going to compete with a top of the range Samsung, but it's definitely a lot nicer than your average budget phone, that's for sure. As I mentioned, it's also got an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, so this phone feels nice and modern in keeping with current trends. Also means you get a nice big 6 inch space to consume media. Whilst it's not an AMOLED display, it is a very good high quality IPS LCD display with great colour reproduction. It's 1080p by 2160 and it's great for consuming media. Good viewing angles, good brightness, overall a great experience and I can't really fault the display. The speaker of course is also important for consuming media and whilst it's in prime location for blocking with your hand whilst gaming, it is nice and loud and certainly gets the job done. More importantly, you'll also find a headphone jack up top, which a lot of people are going to be very happy about. There's a fingerprint sensor around the back, which I find works really quickly, actually. And that's also where you'll find the nice dual lens camera, one above the other, right in the middle. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. You can swipe down on that fingerprint sensor to bring down the notification tray, though this setting is off by default, just FYI. There's no water resistant rating, so you will have to be careful with this device, but otherwise it's solidly built and very reliable. But unless you're gonna hang this thing on the wall, then what's far more important than the looks is the performance. And fortunately, it does fairly well in that category too. It's powered by a Snapdragon 660, backed up by four gigabytes of RAM, and it's part of the Android One program, which means that you'll get regular security updates and OS updates for at least two years. And HMD Global have been very good with that in the past so far. The 660 isn't widely used outside of China yet, but it performs very well, especially when paired with that pure version of Android, which ensures that navigating the UI is never a struggle. Everything nips along breezily. You can swipe through your images. You can multitask with no problem. The four gigabytes of RAM seems ample for that. And gaming is absolutely fine. You should have no problem running anything on the Play Store. To give you an idea of how the CPU is going to perform, it's roughly equivalent to, say, a Galaxy Note 7. I will say that whilst the performance has been very good for me on the whole, though, I have had a few glitches and setbacks. At one point my camera got stuck in the wrong orientation so it was sideways when my phone was portrait and vice versa which was strange. I've had the occasional stutter, I've had a few apps crash on me and for some reason my Bluetooth headphones really don't want to play nice with it and neither does my Garmin Vivo Active so I don't know if that's a defect in my unit but I've got to review the phone I have in front of me and yeah that's a bit annoying, a little bit glitchy. I also had some problems with audio syncing with the camera which I'll talk about more in a moment. Every now and then during gaming I've noticed a slight stutter likewise when switching to my Google feed so it's not a perfect experience but you probably wouldn't expect that for the price and it's certainly more than serviceable and should be fine for most of your needs. One other thing I wasn't super happy with though was the auto brightness and I found that it was a bit too sensitive and jumpy so it would just go straight from being very dim to being very bright just as I walked underneath the shadow and eventually I just had to turn that off because I found it irritating. 
Again, your mileage may vary. It might be me just being sensitive, but that's what I found anyways. Of course, that Android One membership is also gonna be a boon for anyone who likes the pure Android experience. It means that there's no bloatware and anyone who's familiar with using a Pixel should find that this is a relatively similar experience. Personally, I don't mind a bit of a UI layer and a little bit of bloatware. I find that it can be nice to have something unique to play around with when you get a new phone out of the box, but that's a matter of opinion and I know that a lot of people much prefer the pure stock Android experience. There's also 64 gigabytes of storage, which is generous, and that's expandable by up to 256 gigabytes via an SD card. I had no problem with signal, call quality was very good, no dropped calls or anything like that, my Wi-Fi came through nice and strong, so on the whole it performed well. Nokia calls this the phone that you can rely on, and on the whole I'd say that's true, apart from the occasional glitch that I noticed. Some of that I'm hoping might be ironed out with future software updates. What's really impressive is the battery, which is a 3,800 milliamp hour. And when you combine that with the Android One Pure experience, it's more than sufficient to see through a day. In fact, most people should have no problem getting a day and a half, even on moderate to heavy usage. And some people should have no problem getting all the way to two days. So that's nice. And that's the kind of thing that really does make a phone feel reliable because it means that it's always there and always on when you want it. It can also charge really quickly up to 50% in 30 minutes through the USB type C port and on the whole it's very good for those kinds of power users. Something that HMD has been really keen to focus on, no pun intended, is the camera setup on these devices and the Nokia 7 Plus has a particularly compelling uh, suite when compared to others at this price range. So you're getting not only a primary shooter of 12 megapixels backed up by a 13 megapixel telephoto lens which gives you two times optical zoom but also a front facing camera with 16 megapixels. It's all Zeiss branded and on top of that you're also getting the bothy mode. The dual lens gives you the ability to do uh, bokeh and portrait mode. You're getting the same image sensor as found in the Pixel 2 and on the whole it looks like there's an awful lot of promise here. And you're getting the spatial audio recording which should give you the ability to record surround sound. So in theory, this is a really good device for content creators, for social media junkies, and reading some of the other reviews, I'm allowed to do that when I'm reviewing a phone, I found that a lot of people really rated this camera highly considering its class. Personally though, I guess I went into it expecting a little bit too much and I was slightly disappointed, slightly let down by it. I found that occasionally it would be overexposed, sometimes it was hard to get the exposure right, things would be weirdly bright for apparently no reason. I got blur quite a lot of the time, even when I was trying to be still, there's no optical image stabilization and the electronic image stabilization seems to me to be a bit iffy, I guess, or the shutter speed's a bit slow either way. There's a pro mode, which of course means you can tweak things like the ISO, the shutter speed, the aperture all yourself. But for me, I think a good phone camera is one that you can just point and shoot and especially if it's marketing itself towards people who use a lot of social media. The bothy mode is something of a gimmick, so the idea is that you record from the rear camera and the front camera at the same time, and this would then allow you to share moments with friends or stream things on Facebook, which you can still do. And it's a nice idea in theory, although not all that useful in practice, and especially when you consider that there's apps out there that can already do this on pretty much any device. I thought I'd give it a go though, so when I was walking home from Avengers Infinity War, I thought I'd do some vlogging for my personal YouTube channel, so I walked down a path and I was talking, I thought I'd show where I was going at the same time as sharing my views on the film. Unfortunately, when I got home after recording for about 10 minutes, I found that the audio was out of sync with the video and I couldn't use it, which obviously was a bit disappointing. And considering that this is supposed to be a great camera for both these and for audio, it was a little bit of a letdown. Really good workout because I used Infinity War as my pre-workout and was pumped. It's an awesome film. I highly recommend it. Anyways, I was going to film some uh, parkour. Don't get me wrong though, this isn't a terrible camera by any means and if you are willing to put in a bit of work then you can get some nice photos. It's nicely saturated which I personally enjoy. It has very good low light performance although if you zoom in closely you'll notice a bit of noise and loss of detail. It's got a nice aperture f1.75 which means you can get some great um, shallow depth of field effects going on and which means you can get lots into the frame. The selfie camera on the other hand is only uh, f2.0 because I tried to use this to re record myself in the gym and not only was it too zoomed in to really work in that context but it also was 
Again, I overexposed very bright and dark in patches and I couldn't really use it. Of course, having two times optical zoom is very nice and so is having that second lens so that you can do the portrait mode or the bokeh effect. I will say that if you're not using a pixel, then very often this is a bit fiddly and um, hit and miss. This is no different, but it's something else to play around with and it can result in some really nice portraits. So on the whole, I'm not knocking this camera. It's very good for the price. I'm just saying don't expect it to be on par with a flagship quite. And if you're a social media professional or if you're a content creator or an Instagram aficionado, then I would say that perhaps if you have a bit more money, buy a Pixel 2 or a Galaxy S9, something like that. If you have a limited budget and you want a phone with a decent camera, then this is it. So on the whole, to sum up my experience with the Nokia 7 Plus, I think it's a great phone. It's not outstanding really in any way. It's not gonna turn heads with the design. The camera isn't comparable to a premium device, even though it comes close. And the performance is similar to a flagship a couple of generations back. But for the price, it's still really good. It's a really well-made device. It's true that it won't let you down. The battery life can go for days. The screen looks great. It feels really good in the hand. And there's lots of cool options to play around with in the camera. Obviously Android One is going to be a big advantage for a lot of people as well and on the whole it's just a solid, stable, reliable and well-made phone that is fairly easy to recommend. So thanks a ton for watching guys, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did then please leave a like, please share it around, that helps us out immensely. Comment down below and let us know what you think of the Nokia 7 Plus and check out the full written review over at the website. Subscribe if you want more like this, hit the bell button for notifications and check out androidauthority.com for more news, reviews, stories and more. For we are your source for all things Android.